All right, I have to ask this question because we followed. When you meet world leaders, you stick the handshake on them, and it looks like you're going for the power move. Is that intentional? So before COVID, right now, I guess. Right, you know, now you might, can't. This is pre-COVID. You know, he's the one. The only one I've shaken hands with in a long time. You, because you stuck your hand out. <laughs> and I'm saying, what are we doing? But I shook your hand. Yeah. You were tested? I was tested well, when I came in here. Otherwise, they'd take you out right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They'll end the interview. Right? Did you notice that? He stuck his hand out. I say, what do I do here? Uh, rather than insult him, I said, fine. I appreciate that. I immediately, I don't even think hey, I immediately ran, washed hands. Yeah. No, but, but, no, but in the days from like four months ago, yeah. I just, you know, I, I, people don't know that I get along really great with the world leaders. I'm tougher with the world leaders than any president's been. I've been tougher on Russia by far with the pipeline, with our military, with the oil. You know, we're now the number one energy in the world, energy producer in the world. Uh, and there's nobody even close. I've been very tough with Russia. I've been very tough with, I mean, China. Nobody's been tough like me with China. And that's not to be tough. That's because for years they've taken advantage of so many countries, not those two only. The whole world, our allies, NATO, the whole world has taken advantage of our country. But despite that, I have a very good relationship with leaders. I because mean, of the handshake? I'll shake them. I mean, I shake their hand. I hug them. You I this. Power no, shake. I have a lot of great hobby of Japan. You know, look, they've been ripping us off for years and years. They send the cars in. There's no tax. We send a car to them. They say, we don't take your cars. You know, this is the kind of uh, a thing that we've put up with. We defend these countries. We get nothing for it. And, you know, I've ended a lot of the craziness that's gone on. Do you uh, love doing Twitter? There are times when I love it. Yeah. Too much sometimes, right? Yeah. Where's Dan? Uh, we have, I think we have... Dan's right there. Two, Dan, how many, what's our number now total? 207 million. Can you believe it? What happens to this Twitter account? Is it yours when it's over? Well, Do you it's lose mine. It's mine. And I don't know if I'll ever use it again, but it certainly uh, was good. It's a platform... Look, we have fake news. You don't know about that, but we have fake news uh, out there. I very much know about that. <laughs> that exists in my world as well. And then, you know, Dave, that uh, we, we, have a, we have a voice. We have a very big voice. When you have the kind of numbers that we have, uh, you're able to get the word out and an honest word, and that's important. So it's been very important for me. Sometimes, because you're, I follow you on Twitter, and I know I do this, but my... I'm not the pre well, my nickname is El Prez, but it's, true. I'm a company, so we're That's doing true. it. Do you ever tweet out and be like, wake up, be like, oh man, I wish I didn't send that one out? Often, too often. Yeah. You know, it used to be in the old days before this, you'd write a letter and you'd say, this letter's really bad. You put it on your desk and then you go back tomorrow and you say, oh, I'm glad I didn't send it, right? But we don't do that with Twitter, right? We, we put it out instantaneously, we feel great. And then you start getting phone calls. Did you really say this? I say, what's wrong with that? And you find a lot of things. You know what I find? It's not the tweets. It's the retweets that get you in trouble. You've been caught with retweeting. People be like, oh, you just retweeted this crazy person. So you don't even look. You just press the retweet. Well, you just you, fire from the hip. You see something that looks good, yeah. and you don't investigate it, and you don't look at what's on the helmet exactly, right, which yeah. is in miniature. And you don't blow it up. And sometimes it's, uh, but I, I, I have found almost, almost always, it's the retweets that get you in trouble. I've seen that a little bit with you. So we got opening day today. Good. So uh, Fauci's throwing out the first pitch. You give him any tips, you think he's going to be able to, I mean, he seems like a little guy. I've never seen him. You expect a good pitch here? Well, they say he was a good basketball player. And he is a very How nice How tall guy. is he? Not well. He's not tall, but he was a fast little guard. And they okay. say, they say no. They say he was a good basketball player, and he's actually a very nice guy. We don't always agree on everything. You know, he'd That's like to do things that I don't like to do, but ultimately I make the decision. But we make it all a group of people, and he's been here for like 45 years, for many many years. And uh, he's a nice man, actually. So I started doing, I'm a sports guy. Good, like sure. the company that bought us, Penn National, or gambling company. So sports gambling is a big part of what we do. I switched to the stock market, actually, right. day trading. So Fauci is on my X list because every time he talks and says the, companies, the country should stay inside, my yeah. stocks tank. So I don't like that aspect yeah. of it. Well, he'd like to see it closed up for a couple of years, but that's okay because I'm president. So I say, well, I appreciate your opinion. Now give me another opinion, somebody, please. Overrule. Yeah, you overrule. No, well, you have to. And... You no, know, we're open and we're doing well. And I just had a press conference about opening the schools. You got to open the schools. They have a stronger immune system even than you have or I have. Oh, well, that's not saying the much kids. Me. That's not saying much. <laughs> yeah, no, I got better. But uh, they do. They have it. It's amazing. You look at the percentage. It's a tiny percentage of one percent. And in that one case, I mean, a couple, I looked at a couple of cases. If you have diabetes, if you have you know problems with something, but. 
the kids are in great shape. So we want to open the schools, and we're opening the country. And we had great numbers announced the other day. And two weeks ago, we had the best, the best, the biggest number of jobs we've ever had. And the month before that, we had the same thing. A lot of good things are happening, and I think it looks like a V. We have a lot of people that would like to see their states closed. I have a feeling on November 4th, they'll open them up. I think they want to do it for political reasons. But we're doing well. The polls are starting to really shape up. You know, Dave, we were doing great. We were sailing. George Washington would have had a hard time beating us. And then when the China virus came in, all of a sudden, you know, it's a dampener. Right. It really is. Well, it's COVID's a downer. Yeah. Well, it's a downer, though, and you know, psychologically. And uh, it went down, and now we're, we're really starting to do well. We're looking really good in a lot of different places.